Finally, we are about to go live from London MCM, the ESL UK Premiership Season 2 Grand Final. This is going to be a best of five guys between Team Infused and United Estonia Smash on Cobblestone. Jackie, take us away for the pistol. Yeah, let's see how this one is going to go. United Estonia Smash going fairly slow right now, just grouping up towards mid. Looks like they might be attempting to go for a side push. The aggressive play coming out from Zed. He will clock onto that, relay the information to his team, but he's forced to fall back. Try and get himself into a bit of a nice position here. Potentially hold a crossfire with his teammates. And T's wise to what's going on. We'll be charging straight away, though, upstairs towards that B-bomb side. Yeah, United Estonia Smash knew that they got spotted outside along. They knew that that info was going to get relayed, but it's suddenly kicking off over here towards B. Aaron and Crucial, both for Team Infuse, getting USP headshots apiece. Charlie gets one, but Crucial, the flying Dutchman, will get a triple with the silenced USP. Windanski's looking to finish off headshot, and he does. What a way to start off the grand final for Crucial. You know, we were saying over here on the casters and the analyst desk that this man didn't really show his true potential yesterday, but he's definitely done so on the pistol round and hopefully Jack it's a sign of things to come yeah big stuff coming out from crucial there looking at you know showing he's already warmed up and he's looking to do some damage immediately going in with that M4 so let's see what he might be able to pull out in this round United Estonia once again looking to go for a fairly fast play working their way towards the site just getting ready they will be blocked off by smokes and they won't let it get to him just yet just biding their time ready for the pop flash to go through as they begin to charge out onto the site but his head gets clean knocked off by Windanski there he chimes in for the second frag onto Charlie as well almost gets the third but he will finally get taken down Aaron gets the two piece and it's a two on one HS the last man standing he's got to retrieve that bomb he does and he knows that the team infused lads are going to be making their way towards him and just about enough firepower on this infused side to finish off the final United Estonia smash player and because they went for armor that last round after not planting on the pistol round which would have allowed them to go for the early buy this round they are pretty much almost going to full eco things no armor just the odd p250 here and there hold on to your cash so that they can buy it properly with the ak-47s buy a bit of utility in uh, the form of smokes and other types of grenades too going into the next round Guarding towards side once again this time crucial is the man holding it not Zed and he's doing a spectacular job gets two big frags there that's going to buy Zed enough time to rotate over and get another quick kill onto Mick. Charlie's made his way in after picking up that M4 that's yet another kill for Charlie he's not done too badly at the moment but he's just going to play things patiently and wait for one of the infused players to show themselves it's Aaron who showed himself in the end and showed himself in style two kills for him but again up against unarmed opponents not too much of a difficult job. This is where Team Infused really need to pull out the big guns and show us what they're capable of. The first gun round of this first map of this grand final. Yeah, you notice Donia here with the AKs in hand, locked and loaded, ready to do some damage. They have to try and find their foot in somewhere here, ideally. Once again, a little bit slower here, working their way, just getting themselves set up. Charlie will be leading the charge though. An AK in his hands this time, charging out straight through that smoke. We'll play around it just at the moment. Playing overly aggressive just yet. Estonia going in search of that first kill. It's going to be the Estonian in Nugger to find the headshot straight onto Aaron. With Dansky hiding just in the tree, but we see United Estonia smash just wait for this defensive smoke to disappear. And HS out of nowhere wipes out Hetwin Dansky at the tree. Red Snake now last line of defense over here towards B. Can he get a second kill? That Molotov will go down, which will hopefully barbecue a few more United Estonia players. Fantastic play from Red Snake. Turns around, gets two kills before going down, but you've got to feel sorry for Crucial in this one versus three. He may as well just pull out. It's going to be too difficult to retake all by himself. Yeah, no. You know, no reason to just throw away that orb. Might as well just back off, hold on to it the next round. UE smash there. They've finally been able to find a bit of a leak, working their way in towards that B-bomb site. They've done well. You know, Charlie led the charge. No fear that he's got through the smoke, got himself into a nice position to be able to help his teammates out. And then just from then on out, they got the picks and they played it smart. So well played to UE smash to finally get around on the board. And, you know, if this is the beginning of things to come, potentially their T-side could be fairly strong. Going for the hunt as well, trying to find Crucial. Nick potentially can find him with that flashbang. Find himself, and it's going to be a little bit awkward. But he will finally get the fragment to Crucial, and that's an AWP no longer in play for Team Infused. He has been able to save that for himself. And I mean, we saw Charlie going absolutely wild with the AWP yesterday. So once again, on this T-side, potentially this is a way for him to get some massive entry frags that could really help out that side. Yeah, 100%. On cash, he was just getting frags left, right, and center with that AWP, particularly that clutch that he pulled off. So hopefully, Charlie's still got some of that magic left in the bag from yesterday. He's firing long, just about misses the foot of Zed, I believe that was. And Team Infused here, not much money to work with. They've opted to stack the B-bomb site 
Even only one person over on A, but unfortunately four infused. The bomb is in fact going to A where there's a single man. Yes, though, he's trying to create that distraction on the B-bomb site. We'll get into a conflict with Dansky, but he is able to come out on top. That's going to keep Aaron on the site. Crucial as well, just holding from connector. Realizes now that they will be pushing towards the A site. Nugget tapping away, trying to rip his head off. He can't quite do it just yet, so he will live to fight another day. He's able to get the frag onto Aaron, though. Crucial retaliating with that 5-7 in hand. Needs to do some damage, but he won't be able to do anything as Charlie once again showing what he can do with an orb. Yeah, solid play in general from United Estonia as well. They knew their opponents were going to be broke. They stuck together as one solid unit just in case someone went down one of those AK-47s. The last thing you really want to do in that kind of situation is give away your AK-47 to a CT on an eco. It is a one-shot headshot rifle, and regardless of the fact that Team Infuse have or don't have armor, it can honestly just completely turn around if you're not careful. But anyways, United Estonia looks to be rolling back the years and going back to that quick, explosive, foot on the gas pedal style of play. It seems like B, Jack, is going to be the final destination. And Nick will find the first frag onto Aaron. Windansky will trade it off quickly, though. Turns it into the 2K as well as he takes down Nugget, but that's all he's going to get for tonight as Fest chimes in with a big frag. HS will be picked off onto Red Snake as well, though. And the bomb back in Charlie's control. He should be able to get that bomb plant down. And Infused are still dropping all over the place. Zed gets ripped all to pieces by HS, and it's just crucial left. Has been able to reclaim himself on M4, but it looks like he might potentially just scurry away with it. Yeah, Zed would have been better off maybe just waiting for the reinforcement to come in from Crucial before trying to push that B-bomb site. But unfortunately, him easily going down because UE had more than enough time to plant the bomb and getting them solid after plant positions. That now Crucial again finds himself in a one versus three, trying to hold on to the goods that he's currently got. He's got an M4 this time round though, so if he can kill Charlie, he may very well prevent him from saving this AWP. HS is going to try and hunt down the Dutchman, but I think he will just about survive. No, he won't. HS goes around the truck and headshots Crucial. It's the second time now that he loses that AWP. And sure, Charlie lost the AWP as well, but what was important for UE is they prevented Crucial from taking it into the next round. And to be fair, United Estonia have built up more than enough of a bank to be able to rebuy that AWP, even though they've not opted to do so. Yeah, they're looking fairly strong right now. And once again, charging towards mid this time. Zed, Nick is so blind, doesn't realize this is right in there, but Naga will be the one to claim the frag, so all is well. Charging up behind Crucial, though. Crucial primed already with only a pistol in hand. He's still going to be able to do damage. Knocks Mick down and is primed. Ready for the push coming from both sides. HS gets locked off, tries to take down Charlie, but he was too fast for him and turns it into a free on two. This is to this advantage to the team who started things off on the eco. Charlie's going to put them smoke grenades down towards CT to make the retake tougher and tougher for Team Infused. But Red Snake chimes in with an AK-47 headshot and Charlie needs to clutch, but he cannot do it. The eco round will go to Team Infused. And it all stemmed off in and around the A-long area between the mid connector where those two pistol kills came in. And United Estonia smash, credit where it's due. They brute forced the bombs like they planted the bombs. But in the end, three versus two, Red Snake picking up an AK-47. They just could not hold off the retake in the end. Yeah, it's a real shame. You know, Crucial was doing this fantastic job as well, being able to get those pistol frags, as you were saying. From there, as soon as he got the AK in his hands and they were trying to cake him out, he was just getting so many frags that UE Smash just... They lost too many players really to be able to do anything. Once again, this time around, though, it looks like they will be trying to take control of that B-bomb site. They're trying to get in, charging through, but Aaron playing a very close angle with the backup of Windanski. This would potentially go very bad for them. They do realize what's going on. Crucial chimes in with the orc frag, though. Nugget is able to jump down. But Charlie actually got the frag onto Windanski there. Nugget keeping it going. Shuts down Aaron. Crucial still nice and ready with that orc, but not anymore. He has been completely destroyed. Nugget is the only one standing. Not a lot of HP left on him. Not in a fantastic spot. And was that a red snake there holding the angle as he goes for the bomb? Easy kill for Zed. And already we're starting to see the advantages of winning that eco round for Team Infuse. United Estonia, they had more than enough money in the bank to rebuy things up, but now money's starting to get tight. It's starting to crumble. It's starting to all fall down. And that is why we will see a bit of a forced eco coming out from United Estonia. We've got only Fets without armor. Nugget and Charlie going for helmets, which will help up against these M4s. But look at how aggressive Crucial is going. The confidence is flowing, but he cannot find that first kill. Pulls off his shot. He gave away his position. So now he has to fall back and try and change things around. 
Yeah, getting out of that Zed as well, rotating over. But here comes Red Snake. I'm gonna try and help him out if they do go for that eight site push. Red Snake gets one on Tanaga. HS and Co. though still charging through, running into the onslaught. Zed drops Fets. HS chimes back though with a counter pick and to him, and things have gone absolutely hectic on that A bomb site. Mick chimes in though with the Tech 9 frag, tapping away to drop crucial. Charlie making his way in from long to see just about spots the face of Red Snake, but it's going to be Red Snake to get that kill with the P2000 for Charlie to try and clutch, gets the one Deagle kill, going in search of one more, but has to reload, but he knows that Red Snake is lurking nearby, but Windanski from the other angle comes in from behind and finally shuts down Charlie, but still not too bad of a round from United Estonia, considering they only forced things up with the Tech 9 armor buys, one person without armor, and they dropped three out of five team infused players, so that's Guns forced to be repurchased by Team Infuse, which will hammer down their economy just a little bit. Yeah, that's good stuff. I mean, you're not going to be able to pick up the round. You still need to be wearing your opponent's fins so that economy isn't too strong for them. UV Smash, they've been loving this B-bomb site, and it's been working for them the majority of the time. But once again, they're looking to try their luck. They're going to flip the coin and see if they can find their way in. Aaron playing the very close angle. They have been able to dispatch him most times, but with the backup of Windanski from Chicken Coop, things could get a little bit awkward. Red Snake, it's on him as well to be able to deal with the onslaught that is going to come through drop down if they do go for the push. Ooh, the timing a little bit wrong there. He has to switch out, drops the Molotov off, but will that hold them back? Yeah, Skyfall is honestly one of the most difficult positions to hold when you are a counter-terrorist on this map. That Molotov will help Red Snake out, but the T's pretty much retaliate against it by putting it out with a smoke grenade. United Stone Smash taking their time, but what's really good for Team Infuse is Crucial's pushing so aggressive towards A, the rotation has come in from Team Infuse. They know that United Stone Smash must be heading straight towards B. Red Snake goes massive with the M4A1S, gets a double kill, but on the other side of the bomb site, United Stone Smash is still trying to push up to that statue and get the bomb down. Charlie gets the orb kill onto Zed, whilst Mick, his right hand man, fights on and awaits for Aaron to show himself. Flashbang. Well, didn't stop anyone coming through, and he goes for the face, shuts down Aaron. It is now only one man left standing. Red Snake, 70 HP left on him, creeping round the site. Spots Mick, tries to take him down, but Mick was too fast, snaps and lops him out. Really good play from United Stone, especially when you consider at one point in that round they were a man down. And now Team Infused, again, losing two in a row. See you later, economy. And they're being forced to play with only pistols. And, you know, we spoke about this at the start of the game, but whether Cobblestone is a CT side map, a T side map, we really are seeing a very back and forth game. The United Estonia players may be hoping, keeping their fingers crossed, that someone was trying to plant on the bomb site and they'd have been able to stop it just behind that little ledge, but weren't capable of doing it. And Team Infused, we can see on the left hand side of our screens, that's how broke they are. Yeah. Once again, with the pistols in hand. The Mag 7 on Red Snake, though, playing drop down a bit. That won't be too bad for him. Firing away. Naga doing damage, gets the spray now. Mick gets one as well. Fetz takes down Red Snake, and it's all on Zed. Miles away, with only that CZ in hand. Really, nothing he could do at all here. And this is really, really simple. Nice fluid count strike coming out from United Sonya Smash. Aware of what their opponent's economy is going to be like. Guys, we've got these AK-47s, we've got Charlie's AWPs. Let's just rush around together, stick as one unit, watch each other's backs, we'll be fine. Our opponents just don't have enough firepower to surely be able to drop all of us down, and that's why they won those last two rounds. But what's really intriguing now is Windanski and Crucial going for this double AWP setup. Yeah, this is going to be a different maker potentially here. Windanski, of course, playing B with it, and Crucial going very, very aggressive towards side. If you could spot Charlie at top mid, this could be massive. That's their Orper out of the game, and he's been doing so many impactful plays, but unfortunately not crucial. He's going to be missing that shot. Charlie, he's not going to be scared, though. Still proving through with the backup of Mick over on the B-bomb site. HS and Co. They're looking to attempt to challenge Red Snake. Red Snake, he got two kills from here early on. He's had a bit of damage dealt to him, and he will now pull out and retreat. Bomb hasn't really dedicated towards anywhere just yet. But I like this repositioning from Red Snake, just underneath the window, just in case United Estonia Smash do decide to make their way down Skyfall. But by the looks of things, United Estonia Smash want to head straight towards a B-bomb site where Windanski was awaiting them with that AWP. He's going to miss that first shot, and surely now he needs to make amends by finding his second. He cannot. These AKs are getting closer. This is going to get more difficult for Windanski. Yeah, he will be able to get one. There's the second on Tanaga, and they will be able to win the round. But 
A little bit of a crumble coming out there from Windanski on that B site defense. Luckily, he was able to find his form to finish them off at the end. Yeah, really two good, great two kills just dodging around the statue. Surprised he managed to pull him off in the end, but this is what we were talking about at the start of the game. This man, he really is a quality player, and even though you know he missed those first few warp shots, maybe because they were his first few warp shots of the game, hopefully he'll now start to repeat what we saw going in towards the the final bit of that last round. Crucial going for that early peak towards mid. We saw him go for the early peak towards long. Didn't really pay off for him. He went for the early peak towards mid, but this time round, not only did it not pay off, but he actually ended up dying and dropping the AWP. The rest of United Stone you smash now congregating towards this B bomb site. There's still plenty of time for them to go. They could just try and bait out these defensive smokes and Molotovs from the T's, but look at Windanski's position. Yeah, that is so aggressive, so cheeky, the boost coming out there. Looking over the smoke, but Naga should spot him. He does, that flashbang was perfect. And look at this, everyone getting dropped instantly over on that B-bomb side. Beautiful play coming out from UE Smash there, just ripping everyone apart. Everyone's looking fairly crisp. And Zed, he was able to save the orb, the crucial dropped over at mid when he was going for that early mid pick. And he doesn't want to risk losing it, so he will just scurry away and attempt to save it for the next round. Infused. They're not looking as strong as I expected. You know, UE Smash have been able to find this massive leak on the B-bomb site, and Infuse just don't know how to fix it. Well, I feel like the aggression that we saw from Team Infuse this round wasn't really necessary. Yeah. Particularly after they'd lost Crucial early on. Windanski, I, I see what he was doing. He's trying to peek over that smoke, but unfortunately for him, the timing was completely off. Not that you would have known, but the United Estonia Smash players had already crept up on him. And with the AK-47s, it was just very simple and easy for him to deal with. And now Zed needs to try his best to hold on to this AWP and the sniper ladder. Or tower, rather. He's dancing around, but he will get caught off by HS that will knock him out of action. And that's that orb completely out of play. And just look at the cash here over on Team Infused. It is not fantastic at all. A couple of famas is in play. Crucial going for the scout by but we're not going to see any rifles here. Red Snake only the Deagle, Windanski with a 5.7. He potentially can be rather lethal with this on that B-bomb site, but it's just going to be about the T-side positioning. If they charge straight in, maybe if he's in a nice angle, he'll be able to get one or two kills at maximum. He really won't be able to do that much. Here we go, Team Infuse spending every single penny they've got, and so far not doing too badly for Crucial as he finds that scout headshot straight onto Charlie. Knows that Nook is lurking around as well. He gets the uh, hit onto him, and Red Snake finishes him off with the HG grenade. And is this surely going to crumble now for United Estonia? Aaron thinks so, as he gets a FAMAS kill too. And HS and Mick with a lot of work now left on their hands. Yeah, in a fairly awkward position going into this 4 on 2 And Crucial is still ripping people apart with that scout. He's saying, I don't need an orb. I can just use the scout just as well. 15 HP left on him. It's just Mick left. He's trying to find any headshots. Spraying away. It shuts down Crucial. He's fairly low, but up against two players with only pistols, potentially has his way back into this round. Red Snake able to scourge that scout. But Red Snake will use it to his advantage and shut down Mick. Unfortunate stuff there. You know, issues they went for the bit of the force, just did what they could, and they played flawlessly. I mean, crucial getting that first scout shot was huge. I mean, going into the second half now, at the end of the day, 8 7, it's still anybody's game. The pistol round genuinely could make a massive difference. Yeah. You win, the, for example, your team infused. You win the pistol round, 11-7. You win that first gun round, you could potentially make it 13-7 from that point onwards. So it's all about who can build up the momentum now. We see the Betway odds on the left-hand side of your screens, guys. Those odds will constantly change. They're not the individual map odds. They're the odds for the entire best of three. And as you can see, team infused, as things currently stand, are the favorites. And talking about team infused, they're going to... Stampede straight in towards this A-bomb site and Mick, the last line of defense, trying to hold on to his dear life, but he's not going to be able to. Crucial finds a headshot with the Glock. Yeah, Crucial's taking him down, and he's looking to try and find another fag. Yeah. Working his way through, but HS is the one to land the bullet straight into his cranium. Zed coming through as well, and Aaron gets one. Naga, he's been able to peek out onto the site, but Red Snake is primed and ready for it. It's only Fest left standing. He's not in a fantastic position, getting pushed from all angles. He really should be able to do much here. But he knows where these Team Infused players are taking him on from. Windanski does the smart thing just by falling back. And the second I say that, he actually goes for the peak. And Vets is going to find the headshot. The question is, does he have enough time to defuse? He does not. So despite that moment of absolute magic from Vets, it still will be a Team Infused route. Beautiful. I didn't really think he'd you know, have anything in him to be able to do much. They're getting pushed from two angles at the same time. But... 
He snaps their heads and he just knocked them out completely. Beautiful stuff coming out from him there. And again, Team Infused themselves didn't do, <laughs> didn't do each other any favors. Windance could have fallen back that, down that ramp. He didn't have to face. Just wait for that UE Smash player to go for the defuse. But uh, here we go. Zed with the Pro 90. Dropping straight down Skyfall, but it's going to be crucial with his AK-47 to take out the rest. Windancy coming in from long and suddenly finds himself in a two versus one situation. Nook has picked up an AK-47, so this could very well switch back in favor of United Estonia Smash. The CTs know they don't have to face Windansky. They know he doesn't have the bomb. Just wait for him to come to you. Yeah, they're not in a bad spot at all, Windansky. Really fantastic from the other one so far away. He's trying to use Dakalil to the best of his ability and he will be able to get the frag onto Naga. Turns it into a one-on-one. -on -one. A rifle advantage over on Mick. Potentially he should be able to do the damage here. It just out the peak, but Windansky somehow pulls it out of the bag and shuts him down. Really well played from Windansky, but still too close for comfort for Team Infused. But they are going to have enough money to pull out these AK-47s once again. Uh, MP7 for Aaron and a Mac 10 for Red Snake. United Estonia Smash, only Fets with armor. Four CTs with P250s and Fets with the CZ75. And they've opted to stack the A bomb site here. So a bit of a gamble from them. But unfortunately, Lord Gaben is currently in favor of Team Infused. Allowing them to walk into an empty B bomb site. Yeah, complete control there. They've gone for the A stack, but that card has not been played from Team Infused. Unfortunate for UE Smash, but spectacular for Infused just being able to walk on, lock things down, and have more than enough time to just dawdle their way into after plant positions and be ready for the potential retake onslaught that will be coming very shortly. East United Estonia, are they going to even bother to retake the bomb site? No, it just seems like they're going to try and set up together as a unit, set up these crossfires and hope that the team infused players come their way to try and save their weapons and oh my god this genuinely could turn into a massive massacre red snake going in first with this mac 10 gets one gets the double with dansky he's gonna get an ak headshot as well and oh my god nugger gets three somehow so that's now gonna force three team infused players into rebuying and even though united estonia lost that round considering how much they invested into it that wasn't too shabby from them. No, that was a really good round, though, the way they played it with the crossfire setup, just so Infused pushed into them after the, uh, the bomb had gone off. They would take so much damage, potentially able to get one or two frags, and they did flawlessly to get three kills there. It's going to do so much damage to Infuse and Economy, and that's just what we needed to see coming out from the Smash. Getting into this round as well with the rifles in play, hopefully this is when we can finally see them start to try and find their foot on that CT side. Charlie going aggro at mid, trying to gather bit of information and gather intel on the team of use whereabouts. These AK balloons, uh, bullet, bullets, battle off, or be locked. You know, Stone Smash should be more than aware that there are men in and around this area. Bomb has been dropped just outside of B, but we also have Zed and Crucial on the other side of the map looking to cause a few issues over towards Zed, you know, just to keep the CT guessing a dynamic attack. So, with a minute to go, Team Infused have plenty of time still to fine tune their approach going into this round, but really nice passive play from United Estonia. Yeah, beautiful stuff there, just holding out, waiting for the frag to come to them. Broken off into the pair of two here of Crucial and Zed, working their way around mid, trying to find control, but they haven't been able to find anything. And meanwhile, on that B bomb site, Aaron and Windansky, they're tapping trying to find some heads but it's going to be hard when they realize there is one player behind found in one by tree and the tree player is fetz he jumps out springs into action shuts down windansky but all of the cts believe there might be something going down on the b bomb site meanwhile it is all kicking off over a charlie somehow lands that shot onto crucial and sh shuts him down just with ease that bides the cts enough time to rotate over but will it be enough red snake still proving who he is yeah, Red Saint, without a care in the world, is going to spray and pray the foot of Feds, but cannot deal him off damage. And now who's going to pick who first? It's actually Feds who finds a headshot somehow. And at a two versus two, God knows what might happen. Aaron is on top of this bomb site, looking to protect the planted bomb. But now, positionally, Aaron is playing this perfect. Doesn't have to show himself. Both him and Zed with a great crossfire going on as that bomb ticks. And Zed will get the headshot in the end. Another team-infused round. And... It looks like they found the skeleton key to continuously unlock this United Estonia smash defense. Very solid terrorist play from Infused. Yeah, beautiful stuff coming out there from them. And it's just what we wanted to see. I said, you know, they do usually have a fairly strong T side. 
more times out of 10, it's just fairly default. Just wolf pack play, group up, go for the pigs together. And it's been working for them. Charlie, once again, the only man standing on that A bomb site. He's going to have the AWP in hand. Sorry, he's going to have the Deagle in hand and try and find a frag with it. But it's going to be hard. You know, if he does get pushed, he will be overwhelmed. Not a lot he can really do with a pistol like that when infused are in such a large pack. I really like that last round as well. Team Infused tried and tried that B bomb site, failed with 30 seconds to go quickly, pulled out, rotated over to A and caught off United Estonia sleeping. But now they need to make sure themselves, Team Infused, that they aren't caught with their pants down against these pistols. Zed leads the charge straight towards the A bomb site, and it should be a relatively easy plant when Dansky finds a kill on to Nugget. And at the moment, as much as I hate to say it, it's just target practice for Team Infused up against these unarmored opponents. Yeah, it really is. Not a lot they can do at all. They're just blasting through them. And Wendanski, he's all the way over on B. He should easily be able to get this kill onto Mick if Red Snake doesn't claim it first. He's trapped in the middle of a massive crossfire here. Three players on all angles. And now he's finally getting dropped off by Red Snake. The 13th round on the board for Team Infused. And they're just ripping through right now on this T side, just overwhelming UE Smash in every way. Yeah, the beautiful thing about Infused's current situation is that even if they were to lose this next round, they'd still have enough money in the bank to buy things up again and continue to apply that pressure after UE and try and, sorry, reset UE's economy. But talking about that economy of United Estonia, Charlie and Fetz both with AWP. So let's see whether this extra bit of firepower is going to solidify the United Estonia smash defense be able to rip some people apart as they go for that B take. See the nice angle, can he land the shots? Misses the first one onto Windanski, but the push coming out from HS isn't gonna matter. Just blasting through them. Aware of all the players that are there. Fetz gets into a nice position to help out his teammate, but he will get dropped off by Red Snake. Red Snake turns it into the two piece as well. And that B bomb site is almost completely in infused control now. Yep, crucial with that sniper in the AWP. Spraying and praying through the smoke with it, but in fact, it's gonna be his right-hand man in Zed and Aaron, both to get a frag apiece. And now, it's all down to Charlie to try <laughs> and save the day and clutch things again. And find that one kill, as long as he cannot, and then just gets completely surrounded. I mean, I'm very surprised he even bothered to go for that, to be fully honest with you. But, team infused now, two rounds away from winning this first map, the grand final. Yeah, they're looking so strong. This T side especially, this is where they've really strutted their stuff and proved that, yeah, Cobblestone is our map. Cobblestone's the map that we're gonna just destroy you on. They proved it with just the utmost aggression they've been taking and just how they can blast through the defenses of the smash time and time again on that B bomb site. HS, Nugget and Fess playing as the trio, attempting to stop this push once again, but it's gonna be hard for them. Only a few Famuses in hand, only two M4s and not a lot of utility to really hold them back for long. No, none whatsoever. Team Infused though. So far their approach has been that if you take things slow and steady, you win the race. And that's exactly what they're going to continue to do. Most of their attacks stemming straight towards this B-bomb site and HS hiding just behind the tree. He's going to manage to get a kill, but he only has seven bullets left. But seven bullets is plenty of, for a player of this quality. Can he find another one to Windanski? He cannot. He hits the deck, but Nugger will chime in with one of his own, and it's suddenly a two versus two. Bomb has been planted over towards B, and Zed, he's hungry for frags. He's looking for more. Yeah, he seems to try and do damage. Hiding. Lying in wait, goes for the peak finally and sprays down, but he only gets Mick very low. Isn't able to get it for just yet. Aaron pushing him out on the left hand side. It's all up to him now. He has to go absolutely massive. Dancing around that smoke, pops out, shuts down Mick, and the one on one with Charlie. Fantastic movement from Aaron, utilizing the smoke. Here's that smoke going down from the CT, sprays and prays against the diffuser, and his prayers were answered. Match point now for Team Infused, and that was just fantastic play from Aaron. All his years of experience there coming into that beautiful round that we saw. Utilized them smokes on the bomb site, dodged and dived around the CTs. Obviously, Lady Luck played in his favor as well, but in general, great play from Aaron. And he may have single handedly just won this for Team Infused thanks to that pass round. United Estonia Smash trying to change things around now. They've pretty much invested as much as they can. Their round loss bonus is very high because of the amount of consecutive rounds that they've lost in a row, but they're trying to go a little bit sort of aggressive this round, trying to surprise their opponents, unlike the past few rounds. 
GGP. Can he just somehow turn it into two frags? That's going to be massive, giving his teammates enough time to rotate over. Only two infused players left standing. One on B, one on A. They're very far apart. But Windanski could potentially find his way back into this round if HS isn't aware that he's lurking behind him. Fets, meanwhile, on that A site, trying to stop Crucial from pushing up any further. Look at this, Crucial. Aware of what's going down, quickly tries to scurry away back towards that B-bomb site. Windanski's chimed in with a frag onto HS as well, and it's all on Fets. Do it. Now in Skyfall. Dansky pretty much just waiting for Crucial to bring that bomb towards this B bomb site. Fetz is gonna get flashed, but he knows that Crucial needs to show himself, but he showed himself in style. The Flying Dutchman finishes things off for the first map here in the ESL UK Premiership second season grand final. Crucial 25 bomb from him, but still not a 30 bomb to win himself. Well, actually to win himself another 500 quid because he won himself 500 quid thanks to Betway because of the collateral he got yesterday. So Crucial applying the pressure wants to really get his hands on another prize from Betway. Yeah, he was looking really strong throughout that game there. So it's good to see, especially on that T side. We said Infuse were going to straight rip for you know, United once they got on the T side. They found their confidence and they proved that taking the first map 16-7. But anyways, guys, we are going to go straight to the analysis desk. So Machine, take it away. I will do just that. Thank you very much, Karam. Uh, we've got a, a bit of an intri intriguing match to talk about, and that's, of course, because Cobble was outlined at the start of this one by both of, it, both, both of you guys saying, yep. Cobble's the one we'd expect Infuse to pick up. It's the one which doesn't favor the mixed team. It's exactly what United Estonia are. What, did that play out as you would have expected, Henry? The scoreline did, but I don't think that paints the full picture. Like, yeah. it was 16-7, which looks like a very convincing result for Infuse, but that for first sure. half was a little bit right before them. Like, they did manage to win the half on their CT side, 8-7, but still, there were some rounds there that should have been a yeah. little bit, um, well, could have gone either way. There were some big clutches there. A couple of key players, very quiet for Infuse in the first half. I think uh, Zed and Windanski. Zed is one of the guys I called out for being, like, the, one of the style players there. Yeah. It seemed like he hasn't quite warmed up just yet. I think towards the end, he was kind of stepping up, but flawless T side from them. I don't think they dropped a single round. So mm. not really much you can take away from Infuse there. You kind of have to say fair play to them. They did what they had to do, although the first half looked like could have gone either way. I still think they got the result they required. Cobble goes their way. It's just the next round is going to be the problem for me. What did I, you spot on Cobble? I, the really interesting thing for me was the start, as you say, the first half of that, up to 6 6, just went in three round streaks. It was Infuse got three, then UE got three, then Infuse got three, then UE got three. Yeah. And then Infuse finally started to get that momentum going, and in the second half, yeah. just kind of ran away with it. But it's, it's the fact they got the pistol in the, uh, yeah. the second half. I think that was just instrumental to them taking that one. Had they lost that pistol, I think you could see uh, the points in the first half as well, and the camera did go over to them. You could see a little bit of dickering going on, yeah. but it seemed like they kind of stabled themselves out. Second half, really nice clinical play there. Staying together, didn't have to do anything too tactical. Mm. Just kind of just kept it a tight unit, didn't have to execute too heavily. Getting the picks, going fast plays towards B, it was just quite nice to watch. Um, UE, I think, will be a little bit disappointed with their CT half there. Could have yeah. uh, potentially stepped up a bit more. It's still like, felt like they were just waiting to die then, so yeah. unfortunate for them, but like we said, like, when you're coming up in a best of five, you've got to play some maps you're not comfortable on. Their T-side was decent, but the CT left a lot to be desired. I and I mean, which, which would you say, is it uh, something you can kind of highlight in terms of, yes, some maps favor the mix and don't favor the mix? What about halves? Like, I mean, could you, I, in my mind, I can imagine a CT half being easier to play because... Uh, it's the, it's, that's the thing, right? Because um, you can just hold, right? Well, it, this is the thing. So on Cobblestone, the meta is quite simple, really. It's in terms of, like, executing onto the bomb sites, all you're really doing is, one smoke, a couple of flashes over the wall. Yeah. Most teams will favor to go towards B, and you just kind of pile in as a unit. Every team pretty much approaches the, the map in the same way. You're smoking the upper platform, you're waiting for nades coming from CTs, and you're just pushing yeah. in and just trying to work the frags. Obviously, for a team like United Estonia, they have great AK players and great fragging potential. That was working out really nicely for them. They're getting some great rounds. They're going to the B-bomb side. But when you're on the CT side, obviously, Infuse is going to do exactly the same thing and be a lot more coordinated about it. And the CTs, it's very difficult. You have, on the cobble, you're spreading yourself very thin. Mm. You need to be getting information. You need to be pushing A when you think so the B players coming in. It's a communication in. thing. It's, it's, it's more of like, it's, it, it's, it's communication from like, and being able to fill out the map, having that synergy to know when to push, when to rotate to B, when to stack certain areas, when to like boost yeah. up at the drop down, for example, having those kind of things in your arsenal to kind of bring to the party. But it just seemed like they didn't really have anything. They were very static at CT. It's kind of like you said, just holding positions. And that's great. But when you're playing against someone who knows what they're doing and they're executing, going in as a yeah. five-man team and knowing how to play against you, it's very difficult to hold off. And that was evident in the second half. For sure. And now I think we should turn attention to map two. They're going to yeah, be going absolutely. into Cash. And I mean, can you remind the viewers at home, Joe, what happened yesterday on Cash and what exactly we have to look forward to yeah. going into the second map? So UE 
well, UE smashed, pun intended, there like on, on like cash it. yesterday. They really, really just kind of ran away with that. I believe 16 3 was the I score at right, the end yeah. of it. And yeah. I mean, this was a team that people were expecting to get to owed by Xenex, and then they just completely ran away with it. I'm very curious as to how Infused are going to take this one. One thing, though, that is going to be in the way for UE is. Crucial has really stepped up today. We yeah. saw yesterday he was missing shots. It wasn't really on it. But I mean, there was, I mean, one time at B in that last map, we saw him just with a scout and he was getting the wall bangs through the boxes. He was jumping up and just taking yeah. off heads. He's one of the players you really need to watch out for. If he's like firing on all cylinders and I'm yeah. surprised, judging by the state he was in last night, that he was actually just stepping hey. up today. But there we go. Yeah, he actually <laughs> seemed like he's uh, playing very, very well indeed. So uh, good stuff to him. He's one of the players I like to watch. He's really explosive, really yeah. kind of uh, one of those flashy orpers that will face any angle and go for it and he seems like he is uh, turning up today so it's always exciting to see him play well like What's we said though cash is going to be the next challenge yeah what is the story behind crucial because so i mean it was, i think it was kind of telling me he, he played for a dutch team so for basically a bit, but he, he seems to always orientate towards we kind of when i was playing for infused uh, yeah. well i think it's about eight months ago now we kind of unearthed him he was like his upcoming right. talent like he was like known within the dutch team like people like cash king mike s people like that people kind of recommended him to he us really like was, yeah. he's like i think he's only just turned 18 now like so when we were playing him, he was like yeah. 17 years old kid like no one really heard of him we, we gave him a chance in the infused lineup and like he was great like but wow this guy's phenomenal and then uh, obviously the, the team kind of fell apart at that stage and he went to go join, the, we went to go join the, the Dutch the lineup Orbit? which became Orbit, exactly. Yeah. So that was with my, Mike S, Cash King and some other guys who kind of escaped me right now. But that team didn't really work out, Mono is the other one. And uh, that team didn't really work out. It, like, it was a great lineup on paper, but they never really did anything. Like, it kind of like didn't yeah. go to any events, kind of had some decent online results, but the team kind of went into liquidation. And then uh, they seemed like he was a free agent once more and he's back in the team infused, which for them, like they're still trying to find their, their place within, like they need to crack like, the UK first, they need to get that number one UK yeah. side before they can actually kind of move on and go towards Europe. But it seems like these events are perfect for them. They need to be winning this in clean sets so they kind of like Absolutely. give themselves a good platform to work on, I think. Like this is a game they want to be taking 3-0 just to kind of say like, okay, we're ready to kind of move on to the next step. Dropping a map to like a mixed team at this kind of event, you kind of think, well, there's still work to be done here. But hopefully they will continue the form. It seems like there was, like I said, the first half, a little bit of uh, so some incidents that could have gone Either way, the, luckily the second half is flawless. Yeah. Cash, though, I, I actually do favor towards UE. Just based on their performance yesterday, if Headshot is playing like he does now, like yesterday, if he plays like he did today, like he did yesterday, I'm not sure how they're going to contain so, him. So you're calling Cash towards UE, I guess? I, I think so. The I odds think kind of would be favorable then. I, I think, yeah, I think the fact that it's Cash and just the way that there's such an open map, well, it's, it's kind of similar to Dust here and how open it can be. Mm. Very fast play, boosting up. And as you can see on your screen right now, there are the odds. So if you want to get involved, guys, it's uh, esports.betway.com. Get involved at any time. Like I said before, he doesn't, you can't just bet before the game starts and ends there. You can actually get involved at any point. So if you feel like UE have a real good chance on this map, this could be a, a great bet to go in. You can see 255, that means one pound gets you two pounds 55 back. So definitely. Worth a flutter. Definitely, I think that's definitely, uh, if, if I was going to call a, a good bet going forward, that yeah. would be probably the time to get involved. All right. So. Henry G thinks we're going to be seeing cash go their way. Joe, you in a similar boat? I mean, this is going to be surely a close one either way. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be a close match. I think Infused are going to show up a lot harder than Xenix did yesterday. Um, but I do think UE have the advantage going into this one. And to be honest, looking at the map veto in general, we could well see five games today, to be quite honest. Yeah, so I mean, let's, why don't we recap the veto for people that may have just tuned in or missed it. We did just play Cobble. Up next, we have Cash. And then following that, we're going to be jumping into Mirage, which is picked by Infused, which is one, one of their weaker maps, I would say, as well. Like yesterday, like they did take down Choke on it, but it wasn't yeah. like a clean cut sort of thing. I feel like it's one of those maps, if it does start slipping away from them, they can kind of uh, kind of lose it a bit. That's going to be interesting. Cash, I think it, it's such a hard one to call. I, I do think UE will take this one just based on what I've seen from them. But Mirage, I don't know which way that will go. I haven't seen UE on Mirage. I can't really comment. I assume it will go in favor of U Infused, considering they picked it. Overpass, so that's a pick from United Estonia, which is interesting. And you were telling me we've seen yes. it before. So Overpass is, statistically at least, one of Infused's strongest maps across right. the season. How but many times it's have they played it? Not against many. them. So they, well, they played it three times across the season. What? And for, they won two UK out of three. Scene, that's huge, yeah. So that's huge. Uh, yeah, playing we, a map three times. We <laughs> play, I mean, let's be honest, we play Dust 2. You said it yourself, yeah, Dust 2, Cash, yeah, Inferno. Right. So three maps of Inferno. Yeah. We, saw, we, saw, we saw a whole lot more overpass than I was ever expecting heading yeah. into the season. And Infused was one of the teams that kept on picking that one up. And I mean, UE confidently picking up against them. Maybe this is something they've been practicing. Maybe this is... Picking it against them is a strong term. Bearing in mind, you only get 
well, two bands, yeah. and, well, one band at each team, right? And they, which did they go for? They basically took away Train. So I reckon Lesser of Two Evils could yeah. have been well, the case. That's as well. the thing as well. Infused took away Dust too. I think that's a great call from them, oh. considering how yeah. savage yeah. Uh, yeah. Yui yeah. were on Dust here today. The 16th three against Xenex, that mm. was huge. I think that's probably a wise choice. Obviously, Cash is more still like a deathmatch map, but you can still, uh, the mm. tactical team still can execute the bomb sites correctly. I, I'm sure from Infused, we're going to see some of their really nice set pieces they have in their arsenal. Like I know they've got some heavy smoke strategies, like planting within smokes and stuff like that. So expect to see a lot of that coming up. Mm. If they start T-side as well, I would expect a lot of that kind of stuff going in. They're going to play a very slow, methodical game, executing on the bomb sites very heavily mm. and waiting for the, the kind of aggressive style of UE to come towards them. So you've touched on it already. Let's just mm. dive into a little extra depth as the players are finding their seats once again. Yeah. How are we going to be seeing the, uh, the CT side structure themselves? So the defensive side on cash, what, what is your, your default? What are you going to be looking to your, hold? Your default is, well, basically it depends what kind of opposition you're playing against. If you've, done, if you've yeah. done your homework and you're aware of what kind of team you're playing, if they're a very fast mid base team, someone like, uh, let's say, like Liquid or TSM, for example, if they, Speed, if, they, yeah. if they favor like boosting up middle and getting that fast map control towards mid, it depends how you want to go towards it. You either say, okay, guys, we're actually going to let them have middle, we'll play an offer towards mid, and you're obviously the idea is you take one shot and you fall back and you go for more, more passive setup. Or you send three riflers towards middle, and that kind of means you have rifle at sandbags, rifle at a highway, potentially one very up close, or him in the vents. And the idea is you're kind of countering them and actually bringing the fight like towards them. So you, you no, that's a scenario where you have like three, four people die very early on in the round. That's yeah. the thing. Like you, you, the idea is you can kind of molotov the boost, you can smoke off main, and yeah. you're kind of taking the fight to them and making sure you're actually taking those battles and not allowing them to have mid control. For me, I think some, it's such a high risk sort of high reward sort of play. I, I prefer actually allowing mid to be taken sometimes and having the offer towards quad and someone playing towards vents and it's getting that information because obviously middle is it's huge but as long as you're not allowing them to get the CT spawn it's not a bomb site. They still need to execute from that point. Yeah. So uh, it, it depends how you want to approach the map really. I, I would assume we're going to see Infuse play like pretty heavy towards mid this, this game. They're, gonna, they're not going to allow UE to have that kind of control. But let's see what happens. It's very hard to speculate how this one will go down. Yeah, Henry G has said it perfectly. Let's see what happens, guys. We're going to take a very quick break before we dive into our second map. Keep your bums in your seats, both over on Twitch and here at MCM Expo, live from London. We're going to be right back with your second game in this best of five.